Wow, that was awesome. I just love worshiping with you guys. And what an experience it is to worship with you and praise our awesome God, because he's so worth it, isn't he? Yeah. Now, let's get to our lesson. All right, now today, we're back at Grace Kids TV again, and our series, who remembers? That's right, a new chapter in Paul's life. And we talked about those cool Choose Your Adventure books, right? You remember that? Which was that special book where you could see what happens next based on the choices you chose. You remember that? Okay, good. Now, we are learning about a guy named Paul. Remember at first, he was called Saul, but now he's called Paul, who faced a lot of similar situations. And they were not easy ones. He had to come face to face where he had to make decisions left or right, where you know, something would happen and he would have to change it. It changes radically. Let's see what we've learned about Paul so far. Welcome everybody, I'm Leah Golland and I'm so excited to be here with you to tell you more about the adventurous life of Paul. He probably would have been voted by his family and friends least likely to tell others about Jesus early in his life, but we'll see today what decisions he made that changed that and where those decisions took him. It's amazing and I can't wait for you to hear it. Okay, before we go on with a story about Paul, let's play another fun game already. Are we ready for some putt-putt? Now it looks easy, but it's not. Let's, all right guys, who wants to go first? All right, Danny, you have the putter and let's go ahead Oh, all right, go ahead and finish that off there. In two, maybe. Oh, yes, she gets it in two. All right. All right, and here is Jeremy. Oh, right, let's see if he can tie it within two. Excellent, excellent. Now, you guys both did pretty good but well, let's see how you do with an obstacle oh yes we have a twist choose your own adventure obstacle oh let's see how we do there here you go danny yeah it looks easy but let's see how we do now Oh, -ho! let's see if she can get in two again. <laughs> yes, very nice job, Danny. Good job, good job. All right, Jeremy. Oh, -ho! All right, Jeremy, finish it off. Let's see if you can get in two. All right, good job. Okay, let's try one more here. Okay, here's the obstacle. Let's see if you can get it. In. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, I, yeah, I think you're gonna get it. Oh, I got this. Okay, you said you got it. Oh! oh. <laughs> oh okay. Okay. With the big shot. The big shot. All right, excellent job. I was at it. Good job, <laughs> contestants. Now, as you can see, it was much more difficult with the obstacles, just like in Paul's life when he ran into many different obstacles on his journeys. Last week, we heard about Paul and the beginning of his journey. He was originally named Saul, and he grew up loving God, and he wanted to tell everyone the best way to follow God. He wanted to make sure they followed all of the rules. Well, he did not believe the Christians when they said that Jesus was God's son. In fact, he got them arrested and even killed so that they wouldn't tell others about Jesus. But then something amazing happened. He was blinded by a bright light and he heard Jesus' voice and then scales fell off his eyes so he could see again. 
It was amazing. And Paul had to decide whether he was going to keep going the way he had been going or if he was going to change directions, choose a new adventure, and follow Jesus. The good news is he did change his mind. Otherwise, we wouldn't have much more to talk about with Paul. But he changed his name to Paul and started telling everyone about Jesus. And this is where we pick up his story in Acts 9. So Paul was traveling to Damascus, and he stayed with the believers for a few days. And he immediately began preaching and telling them, saying, Jesus is indeed the Son of God. All who heard him were amazed. They said, isn't this the same man? who caused such devastation among Jesus' followers in Jerusalem? And didn't he come here to arrest them and take them in chains to the leading priests? Well, Paul's preaching became more and more powerful, and the Jews in Damascus couldn't refute the, his proofs that Jesus was the Messiah. But after a while, some of the Jews plotted together to kill him. Ooh, they were watching for him day and night at the city gates so they could murder him, but Paul was told about their plot. So during the night, some of the other believers lowered him in a basket through an opening in the city wall. That could have been the end for Paul. I mean, they tried to kill him, and he had to escape down through a basket through the wall. It would have been a lot easier for him to just go home. But he had to choose his adventure and decide what he was going to do. Let's see what happened in Acts 14. When they were at Lystra, another town nearby, there was a man with crippled feet. He had been that way since birth. And so he sat and listened to Paul as he preached. Looking straight at him, Paul realized that he had the faith to be healed. So Paul told him, stand up. And the man jumped to his feet and began walking around. Well, when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they thought he was a god in human form. They wanted to worship Paul and bring him sacrifices. But when Paul heard what they were doing, he tore his clothes in dismay and ran out among the people saying, Friends, why are you doing this? I am not a god. I am a human just like you. We've come to bring you the good news that you should turn from these worthless things and turn to the living God who made heaven and earth and everything in them. But even with these words, Paul could not keep them from sacrificing to him. Then some Jews arrived from Lystra, and they convinced the crowds that Paul was evil. They convinced them to stone him, and they dragged him out of town, thinking he was dead. So first, in our first story, people wanted to kill Paul. Then, in the next story, they thought he was God, and then they wanted to kill him again. This could have just sent Paul over the edge and said, you know what, this is getting really dangerous. I can't do this. I'm just going to go home, live a safe life. I can tell my friends about Jesus, but this is too much. Luckily, again, this is not the adventure Paul chose, and we'll see that he continued to tell others about Jesus. But let's see what happened next. Paul had started traveling with a friend named Barnabas. They told people about Jesus, teaching people in his name. Well, there was another man called John Mark who joined them for a while. But after a short time, he decided to leave them and instead of continuing the work. Well, Paul and Barnabas kept going. And after a while, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back and visit each city where we previously preached the word of the Lord to see how the new believers are doing. And Barnabas agreed. He wanted to take along John Mark. Well, Paul didn't like that idea. Paul disagreed strongly since John Mark had deserted them and had not continued in the work. Their disagreement was so sharp that they separated. Barnabas took John Mark with him and sailed for Cyprus. So Paul chose 
Silas, another believer. And they traveled together. He traveled throughout Syria and to Cilicia, strengthening the churches where they went. So, it's a bit of a bummer. Paul was used to other people not liking him, but this was one of his best friends. Oh, man. He could have just said, you know what, that's the last straw. I can't even keep my friends. People are trying to kill me, and now my friends don't even like me. But instead, he just chose another guy. He chose another friend, and he kept telling people about Jesus. Obstacle after obstacle, Paul chose Jesus. What a crazy story. Paul had to deal with people who, who didn't even believe he had changed, even though he was doing totally new things and acting a different way. Now, then people didn't re believe what he was saying about Jesus either. Oh, he, you know, he also had to run away. Uh, he was beat up. Uh, even he got in a fight with his best friend. Oh, my goodness. At any point, he could have decided, you know what? This is way too hard. You know, he could have just given up and went home and stopped telling people about Jesus. But instead, he kept going, didn't he? He chose to continue his adventure with Jesus. You know, I bet there's a lesson in there for us too. Let's find out. Paul knew God's plan for his life. He knew what he was supposed to be doing, telling people about Jesus. But obstacles kept coming and he had to make the decision. He had to choose his adventure. Was he going to keep going? These were just three examples. There are many more about the things Paul faced, shipwrecks and trials. You'll hear about these in the coming weeks. But Paul could have just gone home. It certainly would have been easier, right? Much less dangerous. But Paul had faith. And he knew God would give him the strength and the things he needed to keep going. So he did. And in fact, that's our big idea today. God gives us strength to follow his plan. Did you know that God has a plan for you too? His plan for all of us is similar to Paul's. He wants us to tell others about his love. He wants us to make the world better by living his way and spreading this good news. Hopefully we won't face the same kind of obstacles that Paul did. I don't think anyone's going to have to lower you in a basket outside of town. But it won't always be easy. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes people might think you're weird or not understand. Doing the right thing, standing up for what you believe in, being kind, sometimes those are hard, right? But God will give us strength, just like he helped Paul. In fact, we have a Bible verse that's really good to remember on those days when you need God's strength. Philippians 4.13 says, For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. <sighs> Life isn't always easy. We need strength from God. We are going to do amazing things if we keep following Jesus. If we keep choosing, even when obstacles come, to follow God. He loves you. He will give you the strength. You never have to do this alone. You know, obstacles can come in all shapes and sizes, like we saw in the putt-putt game. You know, a friend might make fun of you because you believe in God. Or, you know, just because it's not a popular thing to do. You might feel like you're missing out on something because of your beliefs. You might need to be brave and stand up against someone that you know is doing something wrong. But with God on our side, guys, with God on our side, there are no obstacles, none, that can keep us from following Jesus. You know, that is just such great news. It helps me every day, just being honest. Now, we'll hear more about Paul's amazing adventures next week. I can't wait to hear about them. But before we go, let's pray. Dear God, I just thank you for being there for us. No matter what obstacle we may face, horrible things, things that we're like, there's no way God's here with me, but you are. You're always there right by our side, listening. All we have to do is reach out to you and how you can change our lives by just us praying to you and seeking you. Lord, 
we will all go through good things. And we'll all go through bad things. But you're always there no matter what. We love you and praise you for being there for us and being a God who loves us and spends time with us. All right. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, guys, thanks for being with me again this week. We had so much fun. That putt-putt game was amazing. Paul's adventures. I can't wait to see what we're going to do next week. We'll see you soon.